So I guess Eric Bischoff was the one that gave you the job for that? Yeah. I mean, he never, I don't even think he ever really told me. I, 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 he might have come up to me and said, you're the main guy. And uh, I, I just think I found out because Gary wasn't going to be there anymore. And nobody told me that I wasn't going to be taking his place. So I think, I think the first show I said, I'm assuming I'm doing the ring announcing. And I think probably Tony Schiavone said, yep. Do you think that uh, one of Eric's downfalls was letting people like Hogan get in his ear too much and Hall and Nash rather than sticking to the people that helped get him to the news? Well, and that's why I said Vince McMahon might have the secret. Maybe the secret is you put your foot down and say you don't like it, there's the door. I, I, don't, I was never in those meetings. I don't know if, if Eric said that. The problem with it was Hogan had creative control. So you couldn't say, if you don't like it, here's the door. So what you had to do was you had to convince the other guys going along for them to do it because they didn't have creative control. So if, if there is an angle with, with Hulk and Randy and Kevin and Scott and Hulk says, I'm putting my foot down. This is what I'm doing. I'm not doing anything different. Then Eric has to go out there and say, guys, we need to make this work because Hulk has creative control. And that's where I'm, I, I would assume tensions arise because you got one guy that could put, the, you know, and I'm sure... Vince McMahon would never let anybody say, I'm putting my foot down, this is it, this, I'm doing this. Or, so I think that by giving Hulk creative control, and I understand why he did it, because he needed a Hulk Hogan at the time. He needed Hulk Hogan to make WCW uh, legitimate. Uh, we were going downhill fast back when he took over. But I think once the whole thing got really big uh, and all these egos were part, he started getting all this talent from all these from, from that were jumping from other from WWE down here and all that. I think that it became the, the creative control became a real problem. And what uh, put an end to Eric Bischoff's first reign? Do you think there's anything in general? He was just so burnt out, man. Yeah. He had so much he had the weight of the world on his shoulders. Uh, all those egos getting involved. He had to produce, uh, you know, hours and hours of television. Uh, I mean, you know, it's just bur pure burnout, pure burnout. Uh, and um, I honestly think it was so bad that if he hadn't stepped away or been fired or whatever happened, he probably might have lost, uh, might have really lost it. You know, might you know, might have really cracked up a bit there. I'm not saying he'd be in an insane asylum or anything, but he just, you can't have the power, the weight of the world on your shoulders like that uh, uh, week after week after week after week after week with so many people coming at you in so many different directions because then you had the young guys going, but it's my turn, and the Guerrero's going, I want to be in the main event, and you promised me this, and you promised me that, and then you got the, the Nashes going, but they're small cruiserweights, and the Mexicans are annoyed because it, it, it was... It, 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 look, it got out of control. Everybody admits that. Uh, I'm not telling you anything you haven't heard before. I'm not telling you anything that hasn't been written before. Uh, got, egos got totally out of control. And um, I could tell you that, not to get ahead of myself again, but at the end, when he was trying to buy the company, those egos were reined back in. And if that company would have been sold to Eric, and we would have kept the time slot, I think he, he had learned his lesson from before. And I think that the, that the company, if it had a time slot, had every chance to succeed. And that's getting ahead of the game. But, but he, at the time, he just had so much going on. I think it was just, he had to get out of there and go away and get some peace and quiet. Do you think he made a mistake signing Bret Hart to so much money when WWE was basically getting rid of Bret Hart at that point anyways? I will say I was shocked at how he was used. I thought if you're going to pay him that much money, I could have thought, and I'm not claiming to be some booker extraordinaire, but I, as a fan who's in the, who, who was in the business, but I'm a fan watching. When I'm, I'm at ringside, I'm watching as a fan. I was shocked that they went the directions that they went with him. And there were some obvious things that they could have done that would have drawn money that never were done. Why that is, who knows.